Story. The Path of Shadow. Chapter 2. Twenty years later, Man's eldest daughter has grown up, and has become a very beautiful young woman. Man, on the other hand, has become a middle-aged old man, grumpy and irritable. After many years of wandering, Man was able to build his own fortune with his own transportation company, both for passengers and goods. However, that wealthy and happy life didn't last long. The nightmare that man thought had passed unexpectedly returned. In the evening, after urging the hired drivers to complete the final delivery, man left the warehouse to return to his newly built four-story villa. The villa nestled amidst a fruit tree garden, with all kinds of delicious fruits that everyone would love. The four-story villa, each floor elegantly designed and equipped with modern amenities, overlooked the sprawling fruit tree garden. On the ground floor, in front of the villa's courtyard, stood a fish-tail palm tree and a coconut tree. On the house's veranda, man also hung a hammock to relax in his spare time. After finishing work at the warehouse, it was already pitch dark when man returned home. After dinner, it was already 9 o'clock, and after completing the pile of paperwork, it was already 11 o'clock at night. By then, man's wife and children had all gone to bed. Man, accustomed to it, went out to the veranda to enjoy the cool night breeze as he always did. The night sky was breezy, distant dog barks echoed, and the rustling of trees, coupled with the chirping of insects, reminded man of his younger days when he used to toil driving tirelessly, resting by the Trong Sun forest edge. All of this brought back nostalgic memories tinged with sadness. As his eyes gazed into the distance towards the fruit tree garden, man suddenly felt as if someone was standing behind him. A shadow was clearly visible through the moonlight shining, casting its silhouette in front of him. Man quickly turned around, but saw no one. How strange! Man muttered, feeling puzzled, as the person's shadow was clearly illuminated by the moonlight, impossible to mistake. After a while, Man forgot about it and gazed back at the fruit tree garden, his eyes getting heavy with sleep. But immediately he jerked up in horror, because suddenly he noticed amidst the foliage of the fishtail palm tree, a pair of eyes glowing like embers, deep and eerie, with gleaming white teeth. The tree swayed as if blown by the wind. But it was actually the person sitting among the leaves who was swaying. Only someone with keen eyesight could see the person hiding in the foliage. Man had just caught a glimpse by chance. No wonder he always felt someone was watching him. It was true. Man blinked again to confirm, only to see the fishtail palm tree leaves return to normal. He shook his head, attributing it to his advancing age, which led to encountering many bizarre incidents. He turned back to sit on the hammock, intending to lie down, but was startled to see, from somewhere on the coconut tree, a dark figure swaying, dressed in tattered clothes, lurking behind the coconut clusters. Its eyes glowed, and its teeth gleamed white and eerie. Man was terrified, rushed into the house, jumped into bed, and hugged his wife, trembling like a leaf. His wife was so deeply asleep that she didn't notice her husband's distress. Man hugged her for a long time before falling asleep himself, quickly forgetting the strange sightings outside. Early the next morning, Man quickly brushed his teeth and washed his face. He woke up at five in the morning to prepare everything in advance. At this time, it was still a bit dark outside, and despite brushing his teeth several times, he still felt drowsy. Bending down to the sink, he rinsed his mouth vigorously, then tilted his head back to spit out the mouthwash. He wiped his face clean with a towel, then hung the towel on the rack. Only then did man suddenly look into the mirror, trying to tidy himself up a bit. Suddenly, he froze in horror as he saw a reflection behind him, in the dim light. A pair of bright red eyes staring back at him, with a figure standing behind him. Its eyes stared intensely at his face in the mirror as if demanding something. A hoarse voice echoed in the wind. Pay your debt. Man broke out in a cold sweat, turned around, but saw no one. Suddenly, he remembered that figure, exactly the same as the old woman he had encountered 20 years ago, on the terrifying mountain road. Even though he had escaped from there a long time ago, it took Man a long time to forget it all. Since that day, every evening, Man was haunted by those eyes, that figure. Occasionally, it would appear on the tree branches, sometimes faintly in the bathroom. Sometimes it lurked in the shadows of the backyard. Sometimes there were murmurs near the bedroom window. These haunting experiences made man feel like he was going crazy. The phrase, pay your debt, kept echoing in his mind incessantly. 
Finally, Man remembered everything, and knew that now was the time for him to repay the debt to the old witch on the Hoang Tuyen mountain road from years ago. The next morning, his daughter, Tu Quyen, happily shared some news with him. Dad, this summer vacation from university is so long, I want to go on a trip. Can you let me go? Man looked at his eldest daughter, Tu Quyen, and thought about the pact with the witch that pained him deeply. But he gently stroked Tu Quyen's hair and asked her softly, where do you want to travel, dear? Tu Quyen honestly replied, Well, I want to go on a backpacking trip from the south to the north. Man furrowed his brows and said, Through the Trong Sun Pass? Tu Quyen was surprised and excitedly exclaimed, Oh, how did you know, Dad? Nowadays, people usually take the highway. But we heard that the Trong Sun Pass offers more scenic beauty. Moreover, it's a route with many historical and intense resistance war sites, worth exploring. Man sighed, lamenting the fate of Tu Quyen. This seemed like a deliberate arrangement by fate, as if Tu Quyen were destined to go on this journey to repay a debt from the past. Man knew the consequences of Tu Quyen's trip would eventually unfold, so he suppressed his pain and said, I also want to revisit the Trong Sun Pass once. How about you let me join you on this trip? I'm familiar with the route and know many interesting landmarks. Tu Quyen exclaimed. Really? Dad? Oh. That's wonderful. Then you agree to let me go on the trip. Man reluctantly withheld his sorrowful words and said. Yes. On the condition that I accompany you. Tu Quyen happily agreed. Thank you. Dad. You're the best. Then Tu Quyen cheerfully ran up to her room on the second floor eagerly calling her close friends who would join this trip to inform them of her father's approval. Not only that, she also managed to invite an experienced guide, her father, to accompany them, ensuring the group's time would be well spent exploring interesting places along the journey. As for Man, he watched Tu Kian's joy like that of a child, thinking about the outcome of this trip. He just wanted to find a place to bury his head and end it all. How could such a lovely child end up like this? all because of his mistake from years ago. If time could be turned back now, man would gladly trade his life for hers rather than let someone as innocent and virtuous as Tu Quyen die because of his mistake. The next day, Tu Quyen's friends all gathered at man's company warehouse. Man arranged a passenger bus from the company to sponsor this trip for the young group. At the same time, he personally drove the bus to take them on this journey. The journey began, and the ancient Trong Sun Pass gradually unfolded before the group's eyes. Man was very familiar with this route, so he drove confidently. Not only that, he could also find interesting destinations for the youngsters throughout the journey, earning continuous praise from them. Uncle Man, I didn't expect the Trong Sun Pass to be so full of trees and shrubs, and there are so many interesting stories. Tuan, one of Tu Kian's friends, praised Man throughout the trip, making Man happy. Hearing the youngster's enthusiasm, Man nodded and said, Well, I know a little, but the important thing is that I've traveled through this place a lot when I was young, so I've heard many stories from the roadside folks. After speaking, Man continued to focus on driving. Tuin, filled with excitement, asked eagerly, Besides the stories of soldiers sacrificing themselves and the customs of the locals, do you know any other interesting places, uncle? Man replied, Not many interesting places, but there are many intriguing ones. We're about to reach a place, and I'll stop to tell you about it. Tuan asked with curiosity, Is it a big place, uncle? Man shook his head and said, Not big, but just spacious enough. Man continued to drive while pressing on the accelerator, increasing the speed to easily climb the mountain pass. The bus swiftly ascended to the summit of the pass, where the old tombstones that man had seen before gradually appeared. As the bus reached this point, the speed decreased gradually, moving slowly back downhill. The bus came to a complete stop, and the 13 people in the group all got off the bus. Man held a bunch of incense sticks and walked slowly towards a tomb, lighting the candles and burning all the incense sticks evenly. Then, he meticulously went to each shrine, not missing a single one. Compared to 20 years ago, the number of shrines seemed to have increased rather than decreased. Some shrines were probably left unattended for so long that they were just piles of rubble, and even the incense bowls were gone, so man had to stick the incense directly into the ground. After lighting all the incense sticks, man murmured prayers in his mouth. Tuin, 
too queer, and the others didn't understand why man acted this way, but they also folded their hands in prayer. Waiting for man to finish his prayers, Tuan ran to man's side and asked eagerly, Why are there so many shrines here, uncle? Yes, why are there so many shrines here, uncle? All the young people chimed in with questions. Man nodded, sat down on a rock beside a shrine, and thought for a moment before sighing and saying, They are all drivers, among them are some of your father's friends who died here. Because this pass is too dangerous, there have been many accidents here. The number of people who died here is increasing day by day. If I'm not mistaken, compared to 20 years ago, the number of shrines here has tripled. The group listened in awe, feeling sorry for those who died in accidents here but also curious to understand the deeper reasons behind this. Man recounted a few accidents that he knew to the group, even the one where he almost died but luckily survived, while his friend didn't. Man lit a cigarette, then slowly began to tell. You and your cousin, Than, were best friends. After finishing the village school, both of you dropped out and went to work as hired drivers in the city. After a few years, Than bought his own car and invited me to join him. Then, in that July, we happened to encounter a storm. If it were just normal rain, it would have been fine. But when Than reached this pass, the car was blown away by the wind, and he panicked, so he didn't steer properly, causing the car to plunge into the abyss. Tuan sighed deeply, then asked again. Poor guy, how did you manage to survive, uncle? Man told. When the car's roof flew off, I lost consciousness and reflexively opened the car door and jumped out. I couldn't see anything in the rain and wind, the leaves were flying everywhere. Fortunately, the direction I jumped wasn't into the deep abyss, otherwise, I probably wouldn't be sitting here with you now. After finishing his story, man extinguished the cigarette and then laughed. But let's stop here for today, it's getting dark. I'll take you all to another place. Hearing man's words, the youngsters all nodded in agreement. Wherever man went, they would follow. Man started the engine, then turned onto a dirt road right in front of the shrines dedicated to the unfortunate souls. What comes must come, man had decided that tonight would be the last night spent with Tu Quien, his eldest daughter. On this journey, incessant nightmares kept haunting man every night, making it unbearable for him to wait any longer. Enduring one more day would drive man to madness. The night sky began to descend upon that narrow path, the same old path as before with dense roadside bushes, separated by a certain distance. Thorny bushes lined the road, obstructing the path of the car, making the view much harder to see. It was still that eerie road, and sure enough, a mysterious glow gradually appeared at the end of the road. Man looked at that glow, his eyes distant but filled with sorrow. Suddenly, a sense of disgust surged in his mind. A little further along, Man suddenly saw a fleeting dark shadow by the roadside, the shadow darting back and forth among the bushes. Seeing the shadow, Man immediately guessed what it was. Surely, it was the creature that led the living to the world of the dead, which Man had encountered once before, the same creature that had crushed the roof of his cabin years ago. The creature had begun to appear, indicating that the old woman's place was not far from here. Tuin was dozing off, suddenly waking up as if startled by a dream. Rubbing his eyes to wake up, Tuin curiously turned to Man and asked, Where is this place, uncle? Man replied, This is a shortcut. Tuin was puzzled for a moment, then suddenly saw a distant flicker of light, immediately exclaiming, It seems like someone is in this road, shall we drive over and ask them a few questions? I'm curious how they manage to live in this place. They must hunt wild animals a lot. Man nodded, forcing a smile on his face. But in reality, he was feeling a severe headache because it was time for him to hand over his daughter to that old woman. As the wheels rolled faster, the hut grew larger. The wind howled outside, the night seemed silent as paper, drawing everyone's attention into silence. At first, Tuin seemed excited and intrigued, but the chilling atmosphere gradually enveloped them, causing the smile on Tuin's face to fade away. Like Tuin, Man's daughter, Tu Quien, suddenly snuggled up to her father and asked, Why does this place feel so eerie, Dad? Can we turn back and take another road? Man forced a smile and said, This is the nearest road to our next stop, my dear, we'll rest and have dinner there. Don't worry, there will be many beautiful scenes ahead. Tu Quien trembled, clinging tightly to Man, and said, Then, Dad, 
please drive through this place quickly, this hut is too scary. Man forced a smile and said, all right, all right, I'll drive through here quickly. After saying that, Man immediately stepped on the gas to pass the hut. But reflexively, once again, in a flash, Man looked inside the hut. A pair of eyes peered out the door, looking into the car. It was still the old woman, with her hideous grin and creepy teeth. She sat huddled in a corner of the hut like a frightened cat, swinging her hurricane lamp with the wind. Oh my god! All the children unintentionally glanced into the hut, gasping in fear. Man pretended to ask, What's wrong, kids? The children hurriedly explained, We just saw an old woman in the hut, uncle. Yes, uncle, it's an old woman, she looks really scary. Terrifying, more like a demon. The children nodded at each other, affirming what they said. Man chuckled to ease the tension. Well, sometimes people from different ethnic groups can be a bit strange, but why be afraid? Despite appearances, they are very friendly. The children continued to discuss without stopping their topic. After the car had passed the hut for a while, Man stopped the car abruptly, then turned to the children and said, All right, everyone get down here for a rest, then we'll continue. Whoever needs to go to the bathroom, go now. Two queens suddenly grabbed Man's hand and asked, Why don't we continue, Dad? I find this place too scary. Man gently pinched Two Kian's cheek affectionately, his eyes slightly red but quickly concealed. He said, We have to stop for a while for everyone to rest, my dear. You don't need to be afraid, just rest for a while, with me here, what's there to worry about? Two Queen hesitated for a moment, but then nodded. She and her friends got off the car, and Man also stepped down, but he glanced around at the children as if bidding them farewell. Man shed tears for a moment, then gritted his teeth and quickly turned to run back to the car. Slamming the car door shut, he hastily started the engine and drove off. The children, still enjoying the fresh air, some teasing each other, suddenly froze at Man's actions. Tuin was the first to feel something amiss and asked, Uncle Man, where are you going? Man didn't respond. The car simply turned around, retracing its path, and then accelerated away, leaving the children behind. At that moment, cries of horror slowly began to rise as the unfathomable truth unfolded before their eyes. Man had committed a heinous act, a terrifying crime. The speeding car passed by the old hut, then stopped in front of its door. The old woman quietly stood up, looked at man, and revealed her gleaming white teeth, saying, your debt is repaid, you may go. She then turned and walked back into the hut, slamming the door shut. The only flicker of light inside the hut suddenly extinguished. Man wiped away his tears, silently started driving back home. He had unwittingly delivered his daughter and her friends into the hands of the demon. Dot dot dot. Ten days after returning home, the mysterious disappearance of over ten people began to spread. Man was the prime suspect, and police investigations led to his arrest. Despite all efforts, Man remained silent. He was temporarily detained for further questioning, to locate the missing children. Sitting in his cell, Man pondered the sins he had committed, feeling the weight of guilt more than ever. He requested Buddhist scriptures from the prison authorities, hoping to find solace in repentance. After days of reading Buddhist scriptures, Man felt his conscience easing. The sense of guilt no longer haunted him as intensely after he returned to normal life. Due to lack of compelling evidence, Man was released home under supervision. His wife turned away from him, taking their youngest child to live separately. In the spacious mansion that Man had built, now he remained alone. Now, amidst the rustling of insects, Man no longer felt his former love for nature, but rather resentment towards it, like a vile, repulsive entity, an object of hatred. A once happy family was now shattered, a gentle father turned into a monster. Why had he fallen into such a plight? After months of torment, man began searching for answers in the Buddhist scriptures he had collected. Besides teachings of virtue, Buddhist scriptures also warned about demons to avoid. Among them was a demon related to punishment, appearing to punish the apostates. A demon guarding the gates of hell, punishing the unfaithful by sending them into the endless road, the twilight path. And it would make a pact with the apostate. But no matter how many pacts were made, sooner or later, after being deceived, the demon would reappear, demanding one condition after another. Until the apostate had nothing left, 
whether it be loved ones or wealth, all would be dispersed. The only way to end that nightmare was death. After reading about this demon, man knelt down in despair. The law of karma was real, and the apostate would be punished by the envoy of the king of hell. Man had betrayed how, then, and all those who had died tragically. The reasons for his apostasy were numerous, but ultimately, it was because of the sins he had committed in his life. The twilight path had appeared, merely a necessary occurrence in man's life. It was a punishment, and now the punishment had increased tenfold as man had directly caused the deaths of more people, including his own daughter. Putting down the Buddhist scriptures, man stared blankly out into the garden like a soulless man. At that moment, man felt a sense of unease. Outside in the garden, a shadowy figure had been silently watching him for a long time. As soon as man saw the figure, he immediately recognized it to be the old woman from before. The Buddhist scriptures had been right, the punishment wouldn't stop. The demon would continue to appear. In the blink of an eye, the figure disappeared as if it had never existed. That demon was truly cunning and deceitful. Man stood up abruptly, unable to continue enduring life like this. Ending his life meant ending the nightmare. Paying for his apostasy and repaying the debt to those he had wronged. Man went to the kitchen, took a bundle of rope, and threw it over the railing on the second floor. Dangling down was a loose piece of rope swaying high. Man decided to hang himself, putting an end to his life. He stuck his head into the noose, shouting, You damned demon, you've destroyed my family. So, I'll die to see what you can do. After saying that, man was about to kick the chair to commit suicide. But deep down in man's heart, the fear of death still lingered. It was because of that fear that he had traded his daughter's life for it, and because of that fear, he himself had delivered her to the demon's gate. Man hesitated for a moment, unable to do it himself. Finally, man stopped swinging his legs, preparing to slowly pull his head out of the noose. What he had just thought of was impulsive, and man was still very afraid of death. But just as he was about to pull his head out of the noose, suddenly, the hideous face of the old woman and her dangling body appeared on the rope. Man was startled, falling off the chair in panic, knocking over the stool under his feet. The noose tightened around man's neck instantly. A feeling of suffocation overwhelmed him, and death gradually approached. In the darkness, a face was firmly attached to the bony body, hanging on the rope. The blurry face gradually became clear, allowing man to recognize who it was. His heart tightened, the sensation of suffocation intensified, blood vessels were compressed to the point of bursting. Man died of a heart attack, before dying from suffocation caused by the noose. The face man saw turned out not to be that of the old woman, but that of Tu Quyen, his daughter. The wind rustled the pages of the Buddhist scriptures, the next page was turned over, revealing golden words, the chosen gift, was indeed a demon. The End Hopefully the content has brought you interesting and meaningful moments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Ghost Stories YouTube channel to follow the channel's next videos. See you in the next video. Have a good day.